Thank you all so much for coming out today. I'm uh, Aaron Smith with the Marijuana Policy Project, and we're here today because across the across the street over at the U.S. Grant, uh, teams of law enforcement officials from throughout the United States are meeting to discuss their, their continuing the strategy of eradication and suppression of, of marijuana plantations, including the California Campaign uh, Against Marijuana Planting Camp. For thir almost 30 years, camp has been taken to the distant reaches of California to uh, in, in basically embarking on what, what we think is just the largest gardening, largest and most expensive gardening project ever, uh, ever conceived. Uh, despite the fact that camp has failed to achieve any of its goals of actually reducing marijuana availability, uh, re increasing its price, or uh, its, its use in, in California or across the nation, they continue to pat themselves on the back and they seem uh, every time, every year when they, they, they uh, get these record, record seizures, you can see by this graph, every year uh, they, they're posting record seizures of marijuana, but the cost of marijuana, the street cost of a gram of marijuana on the street has not changed. In fact, it's actually gone down slightly since camp began uh, 27 years ago. So it's now with marijuana policy reform on the ballot in California, uh, legislation pending in Sacramento that would end marijuana prohibition. It's about time, it's well past time, I should say, that these, these folks can reconsider their policy and work towards an effective marijuana control policy. We feel that the most effective way to control marijuana is to bring it out of the criminal black market and place it in a regulated market. Uh, by ending marijuana prohibition, we'll drive the bootleg style marijuana plantations out of our, our public lands and forests and replace them with a regulated and controlled market that we could actually reap tax, tax benefits from. Uh, just as we successfully ended uh, illegal bootlegging of alcohol when we repealed its prohibition in 1933, and at a time where our public safety resources are, are extremely limited and strained to the max, and tens of thousands of violent crimes are going unsolved in California alone every year, it absolutely makes no sense to continue in an ineffective policy that's essentially of just pulling weeds every year, pulling weeds, and, and achieving nothing. So to talk about the law enforcement uh, perspective, I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Leo Lawrence, he is a uh, former deputy sheriff and legal researcher for the San Diego District Attorney's Office, uh, also a former firefighter. He has completed four years of doctoral studies in appellate law, and uh, he's now speaking on behalf of Law Enforcement Against Prohibition, which is comprised of uh, former and current law enforcement officers who are seeking an alternative to the war on drugs. So, Mr. Lawrence. Thank you. Yes, my organization is Law Enforcement Against Prohibition, and it's a group of current and former law enforcement officers and prosecutors who urge passage of the initiative on the November ballot to regulate, control, and tax cannabis or marijuana. Having once worn a badge and carried a weapon, 24-7, I am well aware that law enforcement tends to be a macho profession, with police chiefs and sheriffs around the state predicting an increase in crime and all sorts of other evils if the marijuana initiative passes in November. But that's all part of their macho image and a myth. By the way, I'm also a lifelong Republican. There's a lot of officers and deputies, and indeed superior court judges, who know that it's a myth and privately hope that the marijuana initiative passes in November. Today we focus on the massive multi-million dollar, multi-agency, paramilitary campaign to destroy marijuana crops in the wilderness. It's reportedly the largest law enforcement operation 
in the United States. And it costs big money, hundreds of millions of dollars of our tax money. Law enforcement against prohibition believes that we need to divert that money into education to hire more teachers, not lay them off. Now, we all know that the state is in a major financial crisis. If we pass the marijuana initiative in November to regulate, control, and tax marijuana, the revenue that it will produce will significantly reduce the state debt. Fourteen billion dollars. That's a lot of money that could go into the state budget. With a substantial increase of the number of young voters in November in the November elections, the probability of passage of the tax and control cannabis act has risen dramatically. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I have copies of these remarks.